Hey, there we go. <laughs> Good afternoon, Wednesday people. How are you doing? Jason's here. What's up, Jason? Just had a major uh, <clears throat> Spark app meltdown. Just trying to tune. Tune for the folks. And uh, complete and total uh, failure there. Still not a... Still not 100% that the tuner was actually working. Um, but anyway, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Play Guitar TV. We are uh, starting... Oh, we're starting about four minutes late today. I apologize for that. What we're going to be doing is we're just going to continue working our way through this Spark amp, trying to figure out all the little cool things about it here. And it's actually been working really well. Uh, I, I had a couple tones I liked. In it, but I hadn't taken a deep dive, and every afternoon we've been taking a deep dive into this. In fact, I know you all have friends who use the Spark, or you might be in groups or something like that. Uh, let them know. Let them know that we're doing this every afternoon, and uh, we're just going in here and getting tones with the Spark and learning it a little bit more, finding out ways to do it. So uh, I think I belong to a Facebook group, but I don't know if that's cool if you promote your own thing in, in somebody else's group. So maybe I won't say anything, but if you can, uh, head on over there and um, uh, let some people know about this stuff. Okay, I'm going to, uh, let's see here. I think I've got everything set up. How's, uh, how's the level? Is it too loud or too quiet? Just let me know in the chat. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the compressor pedals today. I'm gonna use the same patch that I've been using, which is the, the orange rat. <laughs> uh, we're going to use the orange rat here so we can get like over the top sounds. We can get, uh, you know, half dirty sounds, pretty kind of clean sounds all with one, all just with the volume knob. Um, but let's take a look over here. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little overview of all of the di different compressor pedals that are included with this, the uh, Spark. This is the Comp Wah. Uh, <laughs> and if you go down to the bottom, I've never been able to figure this out. It says temporarily disabled, so there's no actual Wah that I can use here. And it says it's disabled to present, prevent CPU down or overload, excuse me. Um, and it says, please change echo tap to a different pedal. Echo tap. I'm guessing that's the delay, right? So here, let's turn the delay off. Maybe it'll come in. Let's see. No. Um, well, anyway, we're, we're not going to do that anyway today. So we're just looking at the compressor pedals today. We have, let's see, let's see, we have the, okay, let me get the close up for you so everybody can see. We have the LA comp, we have the sustain comp, we have the red comp, we have the bass comp, and we have the optical comp. A, a good selection of a bunch of different compressors. Um, some are compressor pedals, one of them is not. One of them is actually a rack mount studio unit that I'm familiar with. Uh, so we're gonna talk about all those different things. Um, and what we're going to do is just go through each of them. I think what we did yesterday was pretty fun. Was we just hit the hit the uh, hit the compressor, whatever the pre, whatever it just loads up with. We're going to see, hey, well, what that what's that all about? What does that sound like just for a second? Then we'll get in and and fine tune all this stuff. Okay, so um, we're what are we on? We're on the LA comp right now so this is um, the la comp is a model of an la2a compressor studio rack unit compressor that's used on everything you you hear it every day it's uh it's a staple for vocals in fact sometimes you'll hear two of them <laughs> one running into the other uh, a vocal compressor you hear it on bass you hear them on drums and uh, if you look on the internet, you'll hear, you'll see a lot of people say, well, that's what they're for. They're for vocals, they're for bass and drums. But you hear them on guitars a lot too. That's why it's included on this. And why would you do that? Well, the LA-2A has a smooth 
sound for a compressor. What we're going to be doing with compressors is we're going to be doing the actual compressing stuff, right? So being able to to um, to get the uh, the attack right, the threshold, the amount of um, compression that we're the ratio, all of those things. Those things are over here on this side. On the other side is they also have artifacts to them. They also change the tone a little bit as well, each of the different units. And so each one of them will compress. They're going to compress your signal and you can adjust it for the most part. You know, we'll, we'll see that as we go along. But each one of them is going to add something to your tone. And that's what the, the, the choice between them is for what you need them for. So the LA Comp, the LA-2A Studio Compressor, is a smooth sound. It's warm sounding. It's full sounding. It adds that to the original signal, plus the compression. Um, and so that that's, you know, electric guitars, if you needed a warm, smooth sound, say you had a very uh, brittle, choppy type sound, what would you do? Well, you could add a little compression to it and add a little bit of this uh, LA-2A. It'll warm it up a little bit there. So let's see here. So we're already set on the LA comp here. We've got, let's see, we've got three knobs. We've got gain, peak reduction, uh, limit, and compress. So a lot of these are uh, fixed threshold compression. So, so let's talk a little bit about, let me go back to, to me for, let's talk a little bit about compressors, right? So basically, um, they're going to do something to your signal and uh, you're going to tell it when it's, you know, at what point, it, how, how, over what uh, decibel level will it start working? Okay. That's your threshold. So if you have a low signal that it, it's not very loud and it's below the threshold, the compressor does nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't kick in. It might add some of these artifacts. It might warm it up, those kind of things. But it doesn't do any compressing until it hits the threshold. And once it hits the threshold, that's when all the knobs come in. That's when we can start doing stuff. So if you're playing quietly, it may not be doing anything at all. But once you slam the front end of it, bam, that's when the compression starts. So uh, in a... Uh, a studio compressor or something with a lot of different, uh, you know, if you look at your, um, look at Reaper, the, the included, uh, compressor in that it's got, you have all sorts of different ways of, of adjusting the compressor, but in, and a lot of these, especially the pedals, even though this is a rack mount, it doesn't have a lot. Um, and actually the pedal version here doesn't have a lot of adjustment there. We have three gain limit and compress and peak reduction. So, um, gain is going to push it up over top of the threshold or not, or, or skate around the threshold. Um, so it's going to be how much, you know, how much of the signal is going to be compressed and peak reduction. So how, you know, the, the, the high, you know, how much reduction that you're going to get, how, how uh, much it's going to compress once it gets over that signal. So let's, let's take a listen here with it. Let's, let's do it. On, let's see here. I'm going to take it out. Put it back in. What's the difference? Very subtle, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the, the gain right here. Okay. So. Um, the gain, it's, it's pushing it. We're getting more compression and we're getting, um, it's actually pushed. It's actually hitting the front of the amp harder too. So we're getting a little bit more distortion. So sustain, it's fattening it up a little bit. Let's, um, let's do the pink. We're in compressor mode, but, oh, sorry. Didn't. So I've got the peak reduction all the way up. Here it is down. Up. A little more sustain. 
you can hear it as I... And this is all very subtle stuff, especially on the distorted guitar. Let's see if we... Uh, my clean sound is a little low to, to hit the threshold on that. So. Very, 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 um, very subtle on this. Uh, we also have another switch here uh, between limiting and compressing. So what does a limiter do? A limiter limits, it stops right there. So if you go up to a certain am amount, it won't let it get any louder. It will completely stop it. A compressor doesn't do that. A compressor, it will reduce how far it goes above it. But a limiter is, they, you hear these things, brick wall limiting for mixing and mastering, right? And that's those, uh, I remember there was a big deal about a Metallica album that they had <laughs> where it was so squashed. Uh, there was no dynamics in it at all. And it was almost like the waveform was just like had, had, a, had a line and all of, the, all of the, the sound waves just stopped at that line. That's brick wall limiting. So a, the, a limiter... Let's see if we can hear the difference. And honestly, I'm doing drastic changes with this. And I'm not hearing tons and tons of... Um, a difference in everything. So this is a very subtle sound for guitar. Now for vocals, it may be a different story, but we're playing guitar into this. Um, bass is great through this too. So may, you know, maybe you hear it more in a bass, but I, you know, it, to me, it's very subtle. Let's move on. So that's our studio compressor that we have. Next, we're going to the sustain comp. Here, I'm going to turn off the, uh, the rat here. Maybe we'll be able to hear it better. So here's here's with it off. Yeah, let me let me boost my signal here a little bit too. And here's with it on. A little bit louder. Off. Yeah, I can tell the difference in playing it right away. I can feel the difference. It's very present. You hear that? I have to, I have to, to make it sound um, like when it's on, I would have to pick very hard. It still even wouldn't, wouldn't do it there. So I'm not getting this, the sustain. It's not fattening up a little bit. This one, uh, the, the sustain comp is what they call it, uh, is uh, an emulation of a Boss compressor pedal, the Boss CS3 is the one that they said it is and it's a four knob a lot of people call it the country compressor <laughs> I mean, you see it on a lot of country guys boards right four knob compressor um what this is what this i like about this uh is that it's pretty adjustable uh it can get an it, it'll get a uh cutting sound to it where some of the other compressors that we're going to talk about in just a second they Hey, Dean's here. What's up, Dean? How you doing? I saw that a minute or two ago. I just, I just, I, I was in the middle of something. I didn't put it up there, so, so it didn't just get to me. Um, so the, this, this is the, the like the boss. Um, you see, like I think, um, Brent Mason used to uh, use one. Um, a lot of guys. It's in the. Everybody used one of these things. Uh, it's got the tone knob on it, so you can add in some high end there. So if it gets squishy. If it gets a little kind of off um, sounding, tough to play, you can add some high end back in, which is a big problem with uh, compressors and guitars. Um, but this has level and sustain, kind of like the other one. We have a tone, we can add some brightness to it, but it has an attack knob, which is important in sounding um, realistic, not sounding with that super squishy kind of sound that you, that you hear from like a like a Ross, like a, you know, like a, uh, uh, the one we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, and what attack does is attack delays when the compressor kicks in. So 
it, it's by milliseconds, but it's enough so that sometimes when you play the guitar, you have an attack, right? And you want that attack to come through. Well, um, if we turn this on, it's compressing pretty close. Here, let's hear that. It kind of squishes the attack. Now, um, this is a speed setting. It says minimum, maximum, but it's how fast the compressor kicks in. So if you have a slow attack, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to um, get a little bit of your original signal first before the compressor kicks in. And what it does makes it sound a little natural, a little more natural there. So you get the... Sounds nice. So here I'm going to put the attack min. That's getting some, some, here, let's get some, let's, let's overdo it. Really great for pinch harmonics, really for even playing for thumb octave. Makes everything sound even. And with our tone, we can bring back some of the high end that the compressor might be taking away. Uh, so there's a lot you can do with this. Uh, so it's Dean says, funny, I was just going to ask without the rap, um, with the distortion, it all sounds the same to me. Yeah, uh, the distortion compresses a little bit too. Um, but there is, um, especially when you're recording, uh, and you and uh, you can really tell um, when a guitar doesn't really have a little compression on it. It, it. it makes it more present. It doesn't really change the tone. It makes it more present in, in a mix. You don't want to use tons of it because the distorted guitar already is compressed. Distortion is a type of comp compressor. Not really, but it's it it compresses the signal. Um, so that's a nice tone. Oh, you hear that when I hit that? Oh, that's. Let me turn that down a little bit. Maybe that's. No, that's in the that's in the, the tone here. So turn the sustain down. Might be because my attack. Okay, that's more. Yeah, it's got kind. Of, I'm hearing kind of when I hit it hard, it it gets a, um, it gets a kind of a harsh sound there. So so that's our boss compressor let's move on to the next one now here is the one i've got one it's sitting right up there it's the dynacomp right it's the it's the classic so already it's a little warmer Um, when I'm hitting the chords hard, I'm not getting that harsh sound like I did with the boss there. This is a warm pedal, okay? It's got your classic squishy compression. Um, everybody's used this pedal. Uh, Pink, I got the Pink Floyd shirt on today. The Pink Floyd, um, David Gilmore used it a lot. Um, but it's really known for like the Nashville guys, the country guys. Why would you want to use this compressor over something? else um it's uh it's got a uh warm kind of beefy tone to it well why did country guys go for that one well because they a lot of them were using telecasters which are really really bright guitars and uh that what this would do is it would add some beef 
to the sound. It would warm things up. Uh, so you can hear, this is on my bridge pickup. That's the bridge. Here's the, that really sounds nice. Now let's play around with these knobs a little bit. Let's add some more compression into it. Let's get it a little squishier. I'm hearing squish, but let's hear this. Um, there it goes. Everything is just kind of um, Velveeta cheese <laughs> at this point. Um, for, if I needed a compressor to fix something, maybe I, I was, the tone I was using, it was, um, some notes were louder than others, or just, it was when I play quiet, it, it would drop too low. Um, then I would use something else. But if I wanted to, to play something that had a classic compressor sound that I wanted you to hear the sound of a, kind of like a dire straits sound i know he used the orange squeezer i i think is, the, is that one but something like that a ross type um classic compressor where the compressor is is th and the effect i would use something like this here's with it off with it on now i've got a lot of output there let's them Now some of these, the output, the the, um, the first knob brings the gain up into the threshold, and some of them are after the fact. This one I think is just an output knob, so after it's compressed, you can set how how um, how loud it comes through, because it sounds just as squished, even though I turned it down. A Great for harmonics too, so you'll you can get um even sound. So there was a chord and the harmonics, they all sounded nice and even. Um okay, and so what do we got left? We've got the bass compressor and the optical comp. So I looked it up. I'm not you know, actually when when we did the original Spark stuff. When Scott and I did that, uh, the bass comp was the one everybody liked. So we'll fool around with that. I've never played one of those before. I had to look it up. It's the EBS Multicomp Bass Compressor. That's the one that this is modeled after. So let's just take a listen to it. I've been hearing a bunch of different compressors. Turn that off. Okay. Strong low end, maybe that's why it's a bass compressor. We'll play some, some low. I like it. Didn't even touch any knobs. Now, um, one thing I did want to talk about is where this compressor is located. So if you look, if we're, if our guitar signal is coming in from the left and going towards the right, we're hitting the noise gate first, then straight to the compressor and then to the drive pedal. So what was, where, what, uh, Dean was talking about it didn't really sound like it was doing too much and I was I re wasn't really thinking about this is that it's because the compressor was before the drive pedal it was just compressing it was affecting just the pretty much the clean sound coming from the guitar and then it was being distorted if we had put that compressor 
after the drive pedal, which we can't do, then the distorted sound would be affected extremely. Uh, so that's why it wasn't doing a whole lot. That's why when we when we hear it without distortion, because of the where it is in relationship to the, the guitar goes into the noise gate, the noise gate goes into the compressor, the compressor goes into the drive. It's only affecting what happens before it. So it's it's just it's just making it, basically it's making sure that the drive pedal gets a nice clean uh, even signal. That's all it's doing. It's not it's not. Um, affecting the distortion and all that comes after the fact so it, you know it will distort longer because the signal's cleaner that's going into it but you would hear it more afterwards so um i hate to mess with this because i just like the way um let's add a little more compression very musical it makes me want to play Dean just said I think he was talking about a nice sound yeah I really like the way this sounds and when we were doing this originally that's the one we we by ear that's the one we like doesn't matter if it says bass or not it's compressing even pretty heavy with the compressor let's go all the way up here Makes me want to pop the <laughs> pop the low strings there. I'd probably put it. Let's see here. Let's let's see when it starts to kick in. I'd say about about here. Turn it off. bit yeah very nice very nice I like that with this amp too pretty cool uh, okay so and the last one that we have is the optical compressor Let's take a look at the optical compressor. So this one, uh, I looked it up too. It is a model of the BBE Opto Stomp. Um, it has an active and a passive switch, and it's considered a transparent compressor. Um, so the pad switch here uh, has zero and then minus 15. If you had active pickups, pickups that push a lot more out, you'd use the minus 15. Passive pickups, which is what most of us are using, you would put on zero here. Um, put the compressor up a little bit. Very, very subtle. Bring the volume down a little bit. All 
That's nice too. Nice for chords. I really like the way that sounds on clean chords. Yeah, and it doesn't seem to dull the sound. It doesn't seem to add a bunch of uh, low end to it. It doesn't put the harsh high end like the blue compressor did too. So th there are our compressors. We have LA Comp, which is a smooth sound other than the compressing. We have the sustain comp, which can be uh, can be brittle. It has a, it, it can put in the high end when you need it. We have the red comp that has a vintage, over squeezy type sound that has a lot of um, thickness to it. The bass comp it just sounds good to me, and the optical comp sounds transparent. So if I was I would pick these compressors depending on what I wanted th the sound to be what I wanted it to sound like. So if I wanted it to sound, uh, if I had a really um, brittle tone and I wanted to mellow it out, I might use the uh, the red comp. If I had the um, something I wanted to have a smooth sound, I'd use the LA comp. Uh, it, or if I was playing bass, probably the LA comp or the or the bass com compressor. I liked the, um, the bass compressor just made me want to play guitar. So I thought that would be pretty cool too. So there you go. That's that's uh, that's going through all the compressor pedals and the reasons why you would use them and, and what they sound like there and what some of the, the knobs can do. Most of these knobs, uh, most of the controls on these are pretty limited. Um, you're, you're not going to get a whole lot. You're going to get two or three. I think the which, which one had four. I think the blue one had four. The rest had two and a switch, right? So if you wanted a little... I would think if, if you're very particular about your compression sounds, uh, maybe the blue one, you can mess with your attack a little bit more. Um, um, you can mess with the, you can bring some high end back in too. Okay. All right. Well, there we go. There we go. That's, that's what I got together uh, for us. Um, I'm going to be getting ready. I'll be cutting out of here in, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, something like that because we have the Academy. We are getting together for our 202 uh, week 10. 202 week 10 uh, is the, the week where we do the A minor pentatonic scales all over the neck of the guitar. And we're also, we're also doing strumming on off beats. And so with the, for the class that I have for us today, I've got, um, there's two things that I'm trying to do, well, th really three things that I'm trying to, to do with the, with the extra licks. Uh, the first is playing something that, that is on off beats. So getting, uh, if you've got a sound like a song like that's like, bop, 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 you know, like a Stevie Ray Vaughan or, a, you know, some sort of a Texas blues, how do you fit your licks into that? How, how do you play against something like that where the chords are coming on the off beats, right? Uh, so we have some licks for that. Uh, also, what we're doing is we're taking the same lick and playing it in different positions. That's the problem I'm seeing with a lot of students is they can play something here, but as soon as they have to play it somewhere else, um, it goes out the window. So we're going to be moving them, the same lick, into different places, one after another after another, that works with that, um, uh, with, with that uh, offbeat rhythm. And also, we're going to be doing a little bit of the blues scale, too. So throwing that in a little bit. So we're moving around in positions. We're adding the blues scale in, and we're, we're adding new rhythms that we're working on today. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to get go ahead, and um, I'm going to get everything set up for that. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me today. Thanks, David and Jason and Dean for commenting. And thanks for all the folks who are watching and thanks to all the folks who are uh, watching later on. We're getting a lot of people watching these afterwards, after the fact. So um, welcome. If you didn't know, I'm Lee. And uh, we have a podcast, Play Guitar Podcast, and Play Guitar Academy. So, Okay, everybody, have a great rest of your day. I will see Academy members in about 20 minutes. Thanks, Jason. Bye-bye. <laughs>